Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm Dave. I uh, just want to say there's a new golden rule to this house, <laughs> to this shop. For instance, I've got a key rack right by the door when people get home. The golden rule is hang your key up there. Car key. Because inevitably if you don't, you're going to spend the next half hour trying to find your car keys. And the new rule, rule is do not temporarily put your glasses someplace where you can sit. I tweaked in bed. I thought it was over. Lens is out. They're like, yank. But somehow, I can manage to get them back together, luckily, because that's expensive to go and buy another pair. Alright, what else? I'm loving the raised blocks on the lathe. It's a lot easier, hands down, to clean. Beautiful. So that's that. Rearrange the shop a little. You can see behind me a new addition here. The bottom piece, the Kennedy. The Craigslist find. They wanted 125 I said 100 and they said okay. So the monitor, keyboard, and mouse are put away. Bring them out when um, like our customer. I need a, I need to use it for a customer, and I move the monitor to the other end of the bench over there. So the only thing I don't like is it's kind of covering up the flag. So I'm probably going to raise the flag up as much as I can. Uh, made more clamps for the mini pallet, and I still need to get the material to make a shorter one, a two and a half inch rather than three inches. But in doing this, I had to make the knobs and I had to do the knurling on it. And it just still wasn't working. It's like, come on, why can't I master knurling? So I went back on YouTube and watched a bunch of videos and found one guy that had this formula. And I posted this up on the website. So if you guys want to download it, it's a PDF. And you can see his math. But I made a spreadsheet. And figured out what I wanted to do, you know, half inch, turn it down to this, whatever the spreadsheet said. And he started to turn it by hand and it made a beautiful pattern, but then on the next two, I think it was on the third turn, you could start to see the pattern travel, which told me I'm not um, at the right diameter. And long story short, it turns out I had the wrong number. I thought there were 43 uh, the pitch was 43. It turns out when I plugged 42 in the spreadsheet, it gave me a different diameter. I turned it to that diameter on the money, and you could just turn it around and around. And it goes, oh, quiet car. You can see the pitch or the pattern did not move. So that's kind of a heads up. If you manually turn the lathe over, rotate it, and you see the pattern traveling, you are not going to get a good narrow. It cannot move. So after, I guess, and I also plugged the, changed that in my math that I did that video a long time ago and changed it to 42 rather than 43 and I came up with the same numbers that he did. So that's why I couldn't do it. I just miscounted what the pitch was on it. What else? So that's the clamps and knurling. Um, the um, making the gibbs, I ordered a stare it six inch parallel off of eBay came in today put it on the granite surface and it's bowed this way <laughs> so I emailed the guy because uh, this would be nice because I can clamp here and here put the gib in the middle and it's off now get it squared up and then I can put the clamps all over the gib and machine it so I gotta see I'm still um, looking for something um, straight that I can make a give on and I'll go pick up some brass and actually make one. What else we got? I did order, it was from Amazon, it was like eight, ten dollars, a diamond tip insert. So that's going to be fun. I'll try it out, probably show you guys in another video what that does. So the rest of this video is finally showing, uh, making the insert holder. And here it is. This is the last one that I actually shot the video on. And gave this guy a test run, and it's just gorgeous. So, but in doing this, I kept 
and something was off like a thousand and so I did a lot of research playing with the edge finder because you have to find this face to come out and do this hole right. The edge finder putting it in here and repeating it and having a dial indicator on the table, the edge finder is within a half a thou every single time. But what I was doing is, what I see everybody doing on uh, YouTube, even the big machine shops, they'll move the table, the edge finder snaps and they'll zero out the DRO. That's incorrect because you're, uh, when it snaps you're a thousandth over. <laughs> So you're supposed to let it snap back up a thousand, then zero out the DRO. Once I did that, I was getting better results on these insert holders. So just a little heads up. Oh yeah, another little item here. Just side note: the compound. I I used to just kind of do the best I could angling it. You know, you run the compound on something. And you caliper it and you go, okay, I got it real close. It was within a couple of thousand straight. But what I thought about, and I did it too, is I ran ran the, in, uh, ran the tool down a piece of aluminum, micrometered it, and realized I was, uh, yeah, I was like two thousands out, two thousand smaller here than here. So I put a test indicator on the compound at uh, the base of the compound made sure it was rock solid loosened up one of the bolts that holds it in place just kind of loosened up the other one and I was able to push easily on the compound to rotate it 1000 clamped it back down it's now perfectly straight so that's a technique on getting your compound easily adjusted to a thousand or less, so it was a test indicator and it worked out gorgeous. So, uh, the other thing too is they stumbled on Amazon, they have a ton of free apps. So, if you guys with the smartphones want to go through the apps, I'm not sure where the section is, but I stumbled into it somehow by accident. And there's like tons of them free, so you know it's a reputable place. You're not getting something that's got a bug in it or something like that. All right, so the rest of this video is making the uh, insert holder. So, hope you guys like it. Alright, there's the two that I already made. The plans that are on the website are for this one. Or are you going to cut the left? Uh, this is the opposite one, and I want to make the last one for the fly cutter, so it's this one I have to make. Stock is cut already. It's 7 16 10 18 steel. So all I'm going to do is just clean up both edges first, and I'll bring you back. Alright, well, that's that. Both sides are faced off. Yuck, yuck, yuck. yuck. Dust everywhere is. Deburr it, and then i got to set up for fly cutting. And I can't remember which insert I used. To get the nice surface. I think it was the Ultra Dex, but uh, I'll put an Ultra Dex in the fly cutter. Bring it back. Yeah, I just tried it at first with just this generic one from the tooling house that I got, TCMT. And the finish is not that hot. Unless this guy's wearing out, I gotta look at it under the eye loop. So this is the Ultradex one. It's always fun trying to change these things. Alright, come on. Alright, is that in there flat? Alright, that looks good. Let's see what this baby's gonna do. I'm getting blue chips off that other one. Put my protection up. Down a few thousands and go. Oh yeah, big difference. There's the mirror finish. And I'm still getting that surging for some reason. You can hear it. So I gotta do something to get rid of that. 
figure out where it's coming from. Oh yeah, what a difference in the finish, jeez. chips aren't blue now I'm seeing before they were all blue so that's one side done do the other and it's a pretty nice finish so do the other side and then I gotta start taking it down to sides okay final cut on the last side and I'll take it out and show you guys Finishing cut, 3,000 feet. And those chips are hot when they hit me. There it is. Alright. Let's get this guy out of there. plain old motor oil that I showed in a previous video for cutting fluid not bad not bad at all and that is the and then insert is still just beautiful where is that Ultradex TPMT 2151 used for finishing all right, we're gonna set up the mini pallet now. All right, make sure I get this right because I'm doing the reverse. So take one out. That's gonna go on there. That way. Oh, it's gonna go on there with the point that way. No, this is the wrong one. Hey, want this one. <laughs> It is easy to mess up, especially when you're reversing it. Right? That goes in the fly cutter that way. So this guy is going to go on there with the point that way. Which means I want to cut it at that angle. Alright, get these guys out of the way for now. Which means I need to put 60 degree over here. Get that out of there for now. Get some clamps in place here. So I want to make sure this is square and it seems not square. Make sure that's square against the plate. That's pushed in against it. You clamp it. Down good. Alright, so there's the angle. Then get another clamp on it. Where did the other clamp go? There it is. Two clamps, and it ain't going anywhere. And I might as well move it a little bit towards the front to hold it. Every time you do something on the pallet, 
inevitably junk gets down in some of the holes and the threads and it binds up. Even though I take the air and blow them out. There we go, nice and tight. Alright, double check that I'm going through credit grapes. Yes. Alright, so I'm getting an end mill in there, and the idea is the print says how far to go in. But you want to go in far enough that you can make, when you make this cut, it comes to a point. So you can kind of push this up against the point, and you want to cut back to that spot right there. So let me set it up for cutting. Alright, a lot of this is not critical. Can you guys see that? Yeah, it's in being good. Alright, so I'm going to take it down. Going just about touching the surface. Get a light on here so I can see what I'm doing. Alright, taking it down with the fine feed. Just a half inch in now here. and bring it up a thousandth here. There's three thousandths. Alright. Oh, it's scraping. Okay. So zero that out. Now the depth, you want to make it for, is this the insert? Oh, that's the generic. Alright, what did I do with the insert just now? There's the screw. I took it out. I want to make it for the Ultradex. There it is. Which one's which? That's the Ultradex. Okay. Generic one can go over here. So you want to measure the actual thickness of it because you want your cut to be the thickness of it minus 20 thousandths. And I don't think it's that critical, but that's what I've been doing. So this is 102. So if I took it down 90, 92? No. 82. 82. I gotta find the edge first. Oh, no, I don't. I'll find the edge after I take it down. Alright, so back it up. Take it down. 82 thousandths. Uh, 40, 50, 60, 70, 81, 82 thousandths. Okay, lock the z axis. Turn the DRO off. So that's going to be the thickness of this thing, right? Yep, that looks right. That seems like that's awfully far. Double check my math and I want to mess this up. This guy is definitely 0.102. So calculator, 0.102 minus, oops, cleared. <laughs> 0 0.102 minus 0.2. No, clear. 0 0.02 equals 82 thousandths. So, it seems like looking at it, it looks like that's farther down than it should be. But I guess not. Okay. So now I'm going to find the edge. Put the insert someplace where I want to lose it. So, find the edge like this. Not that critical because, again, you're going to come in and make this other angle. So, if you're too deep, you can clear it right off. Where are you? Close it? No. Try it. Just going slow. There it is. Alright, so that's the y axis zeroing out according to the print. I need to go in 410 thousandths. So we just start cutting in. Alright, well, that's all it is. Bring you back when I'm at 410. Alright, final cut. I'm actually at 411, but. More fine mill. Alright. Actually, I should 
drop it down. They usually make a finishing cut on the surface. So that's a 4 13 and a half. Back it out. Come back. Turn the Z on, unlock it, come down a thousand, eighty-two, eighty-three. Relock it, come back into is it fourteen again? There we go. Alright, should have cleaned up the surface. And it did, it looks like it did. Can't tell. That didn't look good. I need to make another surface cut. Go back out from 14. Go back over. Come down. Two more thousands. 83, 84, 85. Go back into 14, whoops, 20, 12, 13, 14. There, now that's making a good surface cut. Beautiful. Alright, where's the insert? sure everything comes out right. There it is. So, the insert sits on there. And yes, it's poking up just a little bit. And perfect. If I do the, this cut, you can see you're going to wind up with a point over here. This is what I kept screwing up on. I never went deep enough in. So, I can let go of all this, right? Yep. So now I'm going to do the other cut, but I can take it out here. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. Uh, get in there. So these clamps do a nice job of holding it, even though they're the smaller ones. And there it is. This needs to be deburred a little bit here with a file. But the insert goes right in there. Kind of hold it there <laughs> so you can see it. So now I've got to cut the other angle. Well, actually, uh, shouldn't have taken it out. I don't know. It uh, doesn't matter. I guess I'll put it back in. It doesn't, oh, yes, it does. It has to be square. Should have taken it out because I got to do the hole next. All right, put it back in. All right, I've zoomed in as far as I can, and I hope that's in focus. Okay, I've got the holder back in the clamp back down on the mini pallet. Now, this is what I tuned into why that hole is off or why I had screwed up three of them. The height of every insert, even though they're the same quarter inch IC. The height is different between all the inserts and the angle on the face of it, which is the relief angle, is different on all the inserts. So that impacts where this guy is going to hit the edge here to have the backing on it for cutting. So what I did is I dropped a what is that? It's a 143, I think, gauge pin. <coughs> Let me look at it here. Rotate it a bit so I can find the numbers. 145. So it's a 145 thousandth gauge pin. And I'll drop it down into the hole where the screw goes. The hole is funneled, so I know I'm dead center, or centered, in the hole on the gauge pin. Now I can move the y-axis and bring the insert all the way back and I'm looking at it with the 10x eye loop until I see it just touches and it squares itself up too. So there's no light in there, it's just touching and I'll go another one thousandth on the DRO. So now I know 
when that set screw comes down, or not set, whatever the screw is, comes down in this funnel hole, it is pushing it up against the backing. And then I'll go and use the x-axis and I'll go left and right until the bottom corner of the insert is flush with this side then that's where I'm going to drill the hole and it works every single time. So now I guess I'll take the gauge pin out and just set this guy up um, to drill and tap it out. So that's kind of my little secret method. Alright, I do want to use the center drill on this guy just to be safe, just put a little oil down here. And I'm chucked the center drill up as high as I can in the chuck because I don't want it bending. Got a fairly good RPM. This was, according to the print, a 2.5 by 0.45 thread, 46, number 46 drill bit. It goes up in there. If I can get it up in there. There we go. This guy, too, I'm putting as far up in the chuck as I can. Alright, on the print says how far down to drill. 46, how do I go down? 0 0.230 deep. So, because I don't particularly want to go all the way through. 0 0.260 deep. Okay, zero out to DRO. And, alright, get some more oil in there. Okay, I'm going to go slow. Three. Yeah, it looks like a nice straight hole, even though the bit looks like it's wobbling around here. Point seven. Point nine. Looks like it's further than that. You know, 125. This is one small hole, I'll tell you that. One fifty. Something doesn't seem right with that gap. Isn't in 160. I gotta go another tenth. Well, about 160. 180, 90, 0.2. Let me get a ruler. 
right here. It's too much here. Point two. Yeah, I am really close. I can see it said it can go to 260, but... Wow. I am close to the bottom. I'm going to quit right there, because that's quite a bit in there. Yeah, that's longer than the screw. So, clean it up. Kind of verify it here. Get my finger on there. Come up. Wow. That's pretty far down. And I'm supposed to go down. How far am I? I'm at point two oh three. Uh, go a teeny bit more. Seven, fifteen, twenty. Calling it quits there. Okay, I gotta set up for tapping and I'll bring you back. Alright, set up for tapping here. Put a little bit of magic goop on it. Tap magic. Stick it in the hole. Bring this guy down. Alright, let me zoom out a little bit here. Yeah, there you go. Now this guy, this top piece, I redid because the other one I just didn't like the finish on it. So I made this one out of stainless. And it seems like the uh, harder the material, the nicer the finish and the easier it is for me to get, um, to get an exact size. I had to get this within a half a thou. Alright, that goes in. What is this delicate? I'll tell you that. Let me snap this off easily. I can feel it twisting. Alright, I gotta take my time with this guy so I'm gonna snap this tap off in there. So I'll bring you back when I'm done. There it is. Put the insert in there. I just wanted to check it and make sure I tapped it far enough down. And it's tight right there. So, and it looks good, right? Yep. There's the magnifying glass. There it is. So this side is just flush. And if you screw it up a little bit, you can always recut, fly cut the face here if you're farther back. And it is touching. It is nice and tight. Let me loosen it up just slightly. Yeah, I mean, it's not rocking at all. <laughs> so, perfect. I got it right. Now all I have to do is I just, I'm not going to tape it, but I'm just going to cut this corner, finish up the face, and then this gets cut back. That was another thing I didn't realize until I tuned into it. The off-the-shelf ones you can see that's cut back until it's flush there. So this gets mounted in here like this and I just um, use an end mill and cut that back but I'm done. So there it is. How to make an insert holder by Dave M. Hope you guys liked it. Yeah, I guess I will show a little bit of this. On this one I want to take it in until I just about just about to hit this point so I don't want to see any flat spot on the back face where the insert goes and that's why I like this flexible light I can put the light exactly where I want and I'm just taking a few thousands at a time
zip line line up wherever it's at. <laughs> yep, a little bit more to go. Alright, so that's kind of that. <laughs> and there's the last of it, the finishing cut. flush. Beautiful. Alright, I'm just going to take a little bit of that point off. Just kiss that edge a little bit. So, I'm going to come over. Just busted that edge. See what that looks like. Nice, perfect. Right? <coughs> Magnifying glass. That's still pretty sharp. Try that one more time here. Take it in 5,000. Alright. And 4,000. start seeing a flat on it. So that's it guys. Just a little bit of deburring and cleanup to do. But there it is. So we're done. Yay. There it is. Time to take it for a test drive. Let's see how it works. Sounds good. Probably making a three thousand cut. There it is. Bring it up. Let you guys look at this terrible finish. There it is. Look at that. Boom. Here, the light's shining down in there. That's the Ultradex.